Hello and welcome to another episode of Optics Trade Debates. I'm Anrash. Hi, I'm Masha. Today we're going to be comparing two categories of products that look similar at first sight. So these are spotting scopes and monoculars. And even though that people don't often really, I don't know, decide between these two, they often decide between spotting scopes and binoculars. Yeah. But some people still come up with questions about what are the differences between these two categories. Yeah. If you wish to take a look at the differences between sp spotting scopes and binoculars, we have a debate on that as yeah. well. Check that out. Yeah. Um, so first, the similarity is that they both have uh, one optical path. They have one objective and one ocular. Yeah. That's the but I would like to start this off with the differences, maybe in size. Yeah, let's start with size. So as you can see, uh, spotting scopes are much bigger in size and monoculars are much smaller. Usually we can't uh, put bin uh, sorry, monoculars in our pockets. Yes. We have some exceptions in both monoculars, uh, like we see with this uh, Yukon Scout. And it's quite, this quite is, big, even yeah, if this you is, pull it out. Yeah. It's a monocular, you can't uh, put this in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. <laughs> But uh, as with spotting scopes, we have bigger ones and much smaller ones. Uh, so that's basically the difference in size. So monoculars are smaller and spotting scopes are bigger. What about a magnification? Yeah, so when talking about magnification with monoculars, we usually have fixed magnification. And with spotting scopes, we have variable magnification. Now with monoculars, sometimes, I mean, usually magnification starts at lower uh, yeah, powers. So we have 8 and 10? Yeah, usually we do we do have some exceptions like Yukon, again, we have here 30. Yeah, Yukon is really except an exceptional monocular in, yeah, all, in all aspects. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and with spotting scopes, magnifications usually start at 30 power and then yeah. go up to 100 even. Even 100. Even here we have do have some exceptions like this Maven. Yeah. Uh, Spotting scope, which starts at 12 and ends at 27, yeah, for so example. And smaller ones naturally have smaller magnifications as well. Yeah. Uh, also, I would like to mention that with spotting scopes, we usually have uh, separately IP, so eyepieces are sold separately. Yeah. And uh, magnification depends on the eyepiece. So That's right. So with uh, certain spotting scopes, probably uh, usually the more expensive ones, yeah. uh, you have to buy the, the eyepiece extra yeah. and the body extra of course so they come into pieces yeah so like uh, I for example s sells uh, the body in I like two versions I think with uh, different objective lenses yes. and then you uh, have to buy IP separately and IP is also um, it tells us it, about the magnification yeah determines yeah. the so magnification, the body doesn't have yeah. anything to do with the mag magnification the yeah. IP does in this case yeah so Andras let's move on to um, the types. Yeah, the types. Yeah, as you can see, the with the monoculars, we almost always have the straight versions. Yeah. Uh, there are again some exceptions, like Noblex produces one um, that's angled. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's like a worm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but with the uh, with the spotting scopes, we do have um, straight and angled types, and they are, I would say, 50 50 percent about. Uh, yeah. how we sell them so they're both popular yeah we do have uh, also a debate uh, about the differences filmed, between yeah. straight and angled so yeah. check that out as well um, now with the, the tripods the case is like so you almost always mount them on a tripod yeah. because of the bigger magnification with uh, with a monocular this isn't the case so you usually have them in your pocket in your backpack and then you just use it and then put yeah. it back store it back again with tripod the observations are more stationary so you um, you install a tripod you mount the uh, spotting scope on it and then you observe for longer periods of time yeah also most spotting scopes come with a tripod adapter on the uh, yeah, bottom so, so they have a thread so that yeah. you can mount it uh, directly on the screw on the yeah, adapter yeah. Okay, so um, the types of focusing. Now with the uh, monoculars, we have two types. We either have a like sort of a rotating uh, knob somewhere on the body of the monocular, or we have this pull-out versions where you just um, focus basically yeah, by putting it, it yeah. in or out. Yeah. Then with spawning scopes, we almost always have a focusing ring or we have like a knob like this. And this knob sometimes also has the micro and the macro settings so that first you um, 
put the picture in, the image in focus and then you just make slight corrections with the smaller micro setting at the end of this knob. Yeah. What about the field of view? Yeah, so the field of view is basically with um, monoculars we have bigger field of view because of the lower magnification. Of course, if you have monocular with bigger magnification, the field of view will be more narrow. So with spotting scopes, field of view is a bit more uh, narrow because you observe uh, at longer distances. Of course. So, so the magnification um, is also uh, higher. Yeah. Um, yeah. So by standard. Yeah. So that that is probably also the case. It's the same with close focus. So we have better f close focus on uh, monoculars because it's a uh, smaller magnification and you can observe more um, uh, objects at more closer yeah, close. distance. <laughs> we even have the Leica Monovit that comes yeah. with a special lens that is uh, specifically created so that you can observe at really, really close mm -hmm. distances. Yeah, yeah. And it works well, we tested it. So yeah. Uh, and with spotting scopes, again, you, you can't observe objects at smaller uh, distances, so like insects at two meters. Uh, so yeah, that's why if you want to observe smaller objects at closer distances, go with the monocular. What about the, the comfort? I can see that uh, some of, yeah. basically all of the spotting scopes have this pull out uh, oculars, the eyepieces. Yeah, so that's um, to adjust your eye relief. Mm -hmm. So more comfortable you'll use, you'll... Uh, um, yeah, it's much more comfortable because you can yeah. press your eye against it and yes. uh, with the monoculars you just have to keep it at a the, the distance, right distance yeah. so that the eye relief is correct yeah. and it's not as comfortable. So but okay, they are not used for longer observations, right? Yeah, yeah, like you said. Yeah. So um, when do we would we use spawning scope and when would we use monocular? I suggest that a monocular is used for by someone who, I don't know, is a nature enthusiast, who is an optics enthusiast, who just likes to go on a daily walks or hikes and uh, would like to have an optical device always at hand in a yeah. pocket. It, it's really small. Okay, this Scout is obviously an exception. An exception you can, yeah. cannot put it in a pocket, but a backpack will do. But with these types, you just, if for someone who really likes optics and uh, really wants to, I don't know, um, is really curious about nature and yeah. so on. But if you would like, I don't know, to, to be more organized, to go on a location, bring a tripod with you and would like to do an observations for two to three hours, then spotting scopes is a much better choice because yeah. they also offer usually better optics. Yeah. Um, this is also connected with price. Most monoculars are priced really low. So, I don't know, under 100 euros. We do have exceptions. So, some premium manufacturers like Zeiss and Leica yeah. do have higher priced yeah. monoculars which are better optically. With spotting scopes, it's a lot different. We have really, really affordable spotting scopes, even underneath 100 euros. And then we have expensive spotting scopes for 3,000 euros yeah, or even like more. So it's a much bigger span here, mm -hmm. a much bigger range when we're talking about price. And it's also, uh, the offer is much smaller with monoculars. It right? is, it is. Not many manufacturers make them, Dude, whereas yeah. many renowned sports optic manufacturers have at least one spotting scope in their offer. Yeah. I think that yeah. we basically covered everything. Do you have yeah. anything to add? No, I think not. So if you enjoyed this uh, debate, give us a like, subscribe to our YouTube channel, check out our other videos um, and see you next time. Bye. Take care.